stable is the Chinese government at the minute? Um, I mean, the Chinese government, I think, I think now, the world's second longest running government after North Korea. Um, obviously took power in October the 1st, 1949, and has spent, I'm, I'm going to answer this, I'm answering a roundabout way, has spent huge amounts of time learning about the fall of the Soviet Union. That's the most traumatic thing that happened for the Chinese leadership. Why did the Soviet bloc collapse? And it took a number of lessons from that. Uh, and it looked at the lessons of the chaos of the end of Mao Zedong in 1976. And it decided, get a strong leadership, but make sure they're not old. Make sure you don't have a gerontocracy like you had in the Soviet Union in the early 80s when George Bush kept on going to funerals because he kept on dying. So have a strong leadership and then make sure there's a successor in place. The man called Xi Jinping is in place right now. And then make sure he gets 10 years and hands over to another generation. So they've worked out that. Don't get yourself isolated from the rest of the world. Don't get a situation like East Germany where you switch on the TV and think, hold on, in West Germany they're getting, be they're getting a better life. Make sure your citizens can get a better life inside China. Make sure your leadership isn't paralyzed. Make sure there's no personality cult. There's a collective leadership now in China and not the rule of one man. Sort out the succession. One thing communist countries could never do was sort out who would succeed its dominant leader. So they've sort out the succession. They've told their people they're going to